everybody, welcome back to a new video. A couple months ago, I reviewed and tested the Renogy 400 watt suitcase solar panel, and it's one of my favorite panels due to the power output, the design that has the metal frame and ETFE coating, and also the five year warranty. But if you're looking for something a little bit smaller, they actually released a smaller version. This is their 220 watt folding suitcase solar panel, and it has a very similar design. So today we'll be testing this out and just comparing these two solar panels. Now this 220 watt version also has the same protective cover that comes on the 400 watt version. Now it's not padded or anything, but it does keep the solar panel um, clean and away from the elements. So let's go ahead and take them both out. So with both the panels side by side, you can see the 400 watt panel is quite a bit larger, but they have similar features. They both have the handles to carry them around. They both have the lightweight aluminum frames. They're a quad fold design, so there's four individual panels put together, but this is how they look like when they're folded up. They have a really nice ETFE coating that is waterproof. And I really like that they have these bumpers on the corners because if you're not familiar with a glass rigid panel, the corners are really sharp. You can cut your hands or catches on fabric or things like that. So having these bumpers keeps that from happening. Now I've never set this panel up before, so I want to take a stopwatch and just see how long it takes to set up. So we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, about 25 seconds. So I've set up both solar panels side by side so we can see how they are similar. Starting with the 400 watt panel, you have your MC4 pigtails over here. Now there are four individual panels wired together and you have four kickstands. So each panel has its own kickstand and you can see it sits really straight and is very sturdy. Moving on to the smaller panel, just to see the size difference, this is the 220. Very similar though, you have your MC4 pigtails there, and also you have a kickstand per each of these panels. Now up on the screen, you'll see the rated power output for both of these panels, the 220 watt panel and the 400 watt panel. So we're about to test these, so we'll see how these perform versus the rated output. Now I'm sure you guys are curious about the solar conditions. We are right at midday. It is the middle of summer, it's around 95 degrees. So yes, these panels are going to be hot. We'll probably see a reduction in efficiency, but very clear skies, just a little bit of haze. Now we'll be testing both the panels with this Blue Sky MPPT solar charge controller. And I have this inline shunt to see the voltage, amperage, and wattage. We'll also be testing the voltage open circuit using my voltmeter. Now the panels have been sitting in the sun for about 20 minutes, so they're probably as hot as they're gonna get and testing the voltage open circuit of the 220 watt panel first, it is 21.25 volts. So for the power output numbers on the 220 watt panel, we're getting 153 watts, and that's at 16.04 volts at 9.56 amps. So that was the power output numbers with the solar panel using the kickstands. Now because it's the middle of the summer, we might get a little bit more power laying it flat on the ground. So I'm gonna test it laying flat on the ground and see what we get. So with the panel laying flat on the ground, we are seeing a little bit more power, we're seeing 158 watts. So this is angled better at the sun due to it being the middle of summer. The sun is really high in the sky. So it is important to get the panel angled properly if you wanna get the most power. In the next test, I wanna see how the 220 watt panel does with partial shading. How are these panels wired together? And do we lose all the power if we shade just one of the panels? So I have this chair casting shadow on this panel Let's see if we've lost all the power or if we still get a good amount. So checking in on the power output, even with the partial shading, we're still getting 124 watts. So plan on really good partial shading performance with this panel. So now that we've tested the 220 watt panel, let's dive into just some basic tests on the 400 watt panel to see how it performs, especially in these super hot temperatures. Now I just realized guys that my other charge controller can't handle the full power of a 400 watt panel because it's a 20 amp charge controller. So I've grabbed the Blue Eddy AC180 Checking the voltage open circuit for this panel, it's 42.7 volts. And let's go ahead and plug this in. And we'll see what type of power we can get from it. So let's do this live. Show you how fast this uh, charge controller is. Just jumps up super quick. So 257, 280, 288. 295, that's gonna probably be our peak there, 298. So voltage under peak load is around 32, 33 volts. And we're getting almost 300 watts. Looking at the amperage under peak load, 9.86 amps. 
Now, when I tested this panel earlier this year, it was around 65, 70 degrees, and we got 350 watts from it. So now that it's almost near 100 degrees, we dropped in about 50 watts of output, and that is normal for uh, pretty much all solar panels. The hotter they get, the less power that they produce. So you'll usually see your peak output in the spring and fall, and sometimes in the winter if you can get a good enough angle. But in the middle of the summer, when it's almost you know, 100 degrees outside, these solar panels are gonna be super hot and you are gonna see less power output from them. Now, if you guys wanna see more in-depth testing on this 400 watt solar panel from Renogy, I'll have the video linked down in the video description. But it's pretty awesome that they have two different sizes, this 400 watt version and this smaller, more affordable 220 watt version. Now, what about price on the 220 watt suitcase? Well, if you check out Red Energy's website, it is available for $335 right now. It's actually on sale. The MSRP is quite a bit higher than that. And I'll let you guys know if I have a discount code. If I end up getting one of those, it'll be down in the video description. Now, I really like this solar panel design, the hybrid metal frame with the ETFE coating. The fact that this is a fully waterproof solar panel, well, it's IP68 rated. So having this out in any type of weather condition is not going to damage it. There is no um, fabric that's gonna fade or start you know, cracking or peeling off or yellowing. This is going to last a lot longer. The best thing about this is that it has a five-year warranty versus other folding or portable panels that usually only have a one-year warranty. Well, now that you guys have seen the performance for both of these panels with the hybrid design, you'll have to let me know which one you'd rather go with. If you wanted 400 watts, would you rather have two of these smaller ones or would you rather go with the larger 400 watt panel? Leave a comment down below. I always love hearing from you guys. Now, if you happen to like this video, please smash the thumbs up button. I will have the links to these products and the video for this other 400 watt panel down in the video description. And I do appreciate Renogy sending out this 220 watt panel for testing. Uh, when I saw that they made a smaller panel, I definitely wanted to get my hands on it. So thank you Renogy for sending this out. Now I'll recommend a couple of other videos if you guys want to check those out as well. You may like the other content on my channel. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys are having a great summer and we'll see you guys in the next one.